Hi, I'm Janet Ingle, the five minute read maker. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, would you go ahead and click subscribe so that you always know when I drop a new episode? Um, today, I wanted to talk about read choice. Um, this is a thing that I have never felt like I was very good at. And the it came up for me recently when one of my students um, who had been watching some of the live streamed orchestra concerts that have happened during COVID uh, asked me, do you, I, I often see you changing reads during a concert, Janet. Is that something that you do intentionally? Do you like have different reads for different pieces? And my answer was no, absolutely not. I, in my ideal world, I have one read and I use it for an entire program because I want to be unfussy in that way. Because I believe that my read has to, that every read has to do everything, right? There are some times that I want to tweak a read to be a better high register read, to be a better low register, to be better pianissimo read. But basically, the read has to do everything. It has to be able to, you have to be able to play it at all dynamics and come in in every register. Um, so my plan is always to start the concert on the same read that I finished the concert on, no matter what the repertoire is. But I'm not very good at that, actually. Uh, I have a tendency, while the, the cacophony of the orchestra warm-up is going on, to really fall in love with the read that I'm playing on, the one that feels like I can be heard over all of this orchestral noise. And then, when things get quiet and suddenly I give an A, I'm shocked, shocked by the quality of the read that I've chosen. Um, in some cases, it's much more uh, vibrant than I was expecting, or has a lot more like cut in the sound than I was anticipating, or maybe I was really liking the flexibility as I like played around while the orchestra was playing, but then suddenly I give an A and it's like, <laughs> I'm exaggerating. I hope you can tell that. <laughs> what I have, learned to do is to make sure that I have two or three reads ready to go at the beginning of the concert. Not just that they're in my case and I know they're actual reads and they're safe, but actually soaked up and ready for action. And I try to have my my read, my one read choice, the one that I think I'm going to finish the concert on, um, as the one that is on my oboe, but I try to have one that's a little bit easier and one that's a little bit more resistant so that I know what I'm looking at and I know what I need when, if things begin to go south on me or begin to go sideways during the concert, so I know what I can jump to. I feel like this was particularly relevant during last week's music festival. I was performing with the Baroque on Beaver Music Festival. It's up on Beaver Island, which is a little island in the middle of Lake Michigan, far, far north uh, in the US. And uh, there's no air conditioning in the venues on this tiny island because most of the time it's cold, right? Um, and it wasn't a terribly hot week. It was maybe in the 70s most days but in, and chilly in the mornings. But here's what the deal was. Um, every morning we had a rehearsal around 10 o'clock in the morning and I loved my reads. I felt so good playing in the orchestra in those morning rehearsals. Everything felt comfortable. I had all of the dynamic range I could possibly want. I had all my slurs. Everything was in place. And then over the we ha would have the afternoon off and over the course of the day of course the temperature increases. The humidity increases a little bit and come 7 30 at night in the gym where we were performing, it was probably 10 degrees warmer than it had been in the morning. And there were 200 people sitting in seats breathing where previously there had not been. So much, much hotter, much, much more humid at the concert time than in the rehearsal time. And really at no other time during the day was I in a scenario where it was that hot and that humid because that was a condition that only occurred during performances because of all the people there, because of the time of day that we were performing. So in fact, what happened every night is that I warmed up on a read that felt as good as I could make it, but by halfway through the first half, um, I felt like that read was collapsing. I was having trouble with uh, connecting, just easy notes 
to each other because the reed would collapse on me. Um, on some other occasions, I had reeds that just got way too big and the response uh, suffered because humidity affects reeds dramatically and affects different reeds in different ways. Um, and so very often, almost always, by midway through the first half of the concert, I was in a really dire situation with the reed that was on my oboe. And I found myself changing, I would bail out to an easier reed, I would bail out to a reed that had more uh, cushion in the in the response. And it wasn't always clear exactly what would work, because all of the reeds in my case had been tried and tested and uh, deemed lovely during morning rehearsals, but didn't so much work well during the evening rehearsals. What's my actual point? My point is, when you sit down to play a concert, it is probably not enough to have one read that you know, like, and trust that you expect to work for you the whole time. Even though that's what you want, and maybe sometimes that will work out. But conditions can change, you can change, and you may need something else. So my recommendation always is to have two or three reeds ready to go, soaked up, that, that you have played on and warmed up on, that you sort of know where the response is so that you don't move from one reed to something else that shocks you in the moment, in performance, in front of a live audience. Be ready for anything. As you're filling up your reed case with reeds, know that it is not important actually that every one of them plays exactly the same. A big part of having abundance in my reed case and feeling secure when I go into concerts is knowing that I have some very old reeds that are like reliable. You soak them long enough they will give you another hour of excellent life. That I have new reeds that have energy and uh, spring in them. Um, that even if they're they feel too big for me right now, they will come along and I can I can develop them as I go. That I have reeds that are that were great in a previous season. And maybe they don't feel fantastic now, but boy, if it suddenly turns cold in the middle of my concert, I might need to go there. Um, having abundance in my reed case means that even though the conditions in my concert are different than the conditions were in the rehearsal, even though things, the read that I loved in my dress rehearsal might not feel great at the beginning of my concert, something will work. And as long as I have, you know, a second or two to uh, apply my knife skills to the, to the challenge, I know that I can make something work. I hope that this has been helpful. This has been a five minute read maker lesson. I publish these approximately every week on Fridays right here on YouTube. You can uh, watch them all here. You can subscribe if you wish. I hope you do. And if you've got a question for me, or if you would like to order reeds or cane, you can find me at my website, JanetIngle.com, and I would love to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.